Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third week of March, 14th until the 18th, Monday to Friday. Remember, once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED model to one of you, so please subscribe. This episode is sponsored by Sakurako. Sakurako is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of 19 authentic, traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers. Each month you get a box packed with fascinating treats, each of which is explained in a lovely booklet with the box, so idiots such as myself can feel a bit more cultured. Biscuits, cake, tea, of which March's theme is afternoon tea. You even get a nice little cup along with it. Experience authentic Japanese tea time at your home by clicking the link in the description and use the code on the screen switch to get $5 off your first Sakurako order. If you need to see more, then between the main part of this episode and the community spotlight each week, I'm going to be taking a dive into this box and showing off all the goodies, so stay tuned. Gal Gun Double Peace is the big cultural release this week. I mean, what's more peaceful than shooting pheromones at schoolgirls to make them feel euphoria to subdue them? Yeah, this is kind of like House of the Dead, it's a rail shooter, except far, far more disturbing. I mean, play this if you want, just make sure you take a shower afterwards, because the slime is going to be pouring off you. This is a port of the second game in the series. No, believe it or not, Gal Gun 2 is not the second game, those wacky game developers. This is actually a PS4 Vita release from 2016. Yeah, making me feel properly old. This release contains most of the DLC that was previously released and boasts 450 underwear designs to discover. I wonder if there are any y fronts in there, that would be a game changer. And our executive producers Jay Cross 7776, Mental Traveler, Cartoon Soren, and they, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Go take a shower. Disco Elysium should probably be releasing at retail this week. This long-awaited adventure game is considered an all-time great. This kind of looks like an old-school RPG like Baldur's Gate or something, but it is much more about the dialogue, the investigation. There's a hell of a lot of reading, so it's much more of a chill game than you'd think. I do know that this game got an update recently that massively, massively improved the load times, which were horrendous in the original release, but uh, I don't know if this cartridge includes the patch. I would doubt it, but let me know if you buy it. And our executive producers are excited about this one. Parsnip Coffee, Santa Tartaruga, Thorn Metal Luna, Dane Wilkinson, Punky Dooster, Robotech, God of Resin, and Government Fat Cat. They've chosen this as their pick of the week. Rectum Origins Collection. Um, oh, Rechnum Origins, Rechnum, nice choice of name. This is releasing in Europe this week with a standard edition and a collector's edition. This is three action platformer games in one, two Rectums and one Ployd, which really sounds like you need to go see a doctor. Those Ploids can be dangerous if left untreated. I know, and don't even get me started on two Rectums, you should be in some kind of Freaks of the Year annual. Well anyways, I checked out some reviews of these games and mostly they are mediocre. WRC 10 is releasing physically on the Switch in Europe this week. What's there to say about this? I mean, it's a rally game. There's not a whole lot of options on the Switch, so this is basically it. I know the last release was moderately well received on the system. I always worry about performance issues with games like this, so fingers crossed this one is good too. And our executive producer Grant Cert has chosen this as his pick of the week. The Cruel King and The Great Hero should be releasing in North America this week, although I know a lot of people got theirs earlier than expected. I already talked about this last week, this will be a popular one, I have no doubt. Don't be on the fence about this one if you're on the fence, just get it because I'm pretty sure this will be difficult to get for a reasonable price in the future. Alright, the low prints. Now, obviously we have picks of the weeks from our executives, but I'm also thinking of including a brand new award called the Bafflement of the Week, because this week I've been baffled by Strictly Limited Games again. They baffle me quite a lot, because they have put up for pre-order Super Epic. Yeah, you may know this game from always seeing it in bargain bins. It's really cheap on Amazon. Not that there's anything wrong with the game, as it's pretty good, it's a good game, 
but I think it's fair to say it kind of flopped in both Europe and North America with its limited run release. And so, what are Strictly Limited doing? Well, they're making a collector's edition for it, of course, for absolutely no reason aside from, I'm guessing, they got cheap stock from Numskull that they were desperately trying to shift, you know, print some new covers, slap some stickers on it, call it a new collector's edition, earn a little bit of money that you probably desperately need by now. It's really clear to see what they're doing. They must have got these seriously on the cheap if it's worth them to look this awkward. I mean, I almost pity them, almost. And I just absolutely, absolutely love the complete irony that this game is all about how greedy game publishers ruined gaming is just Oh, I think I'm having an irony initiated orgasm right now. This must be an inside joke. They must know this, right? It's just, it's beautiful. It's poetic. Ender Lilies is a highly regarded Metroidvania on the Switch. Many people have been begging for a physical release, and here it is, thanks to limited run games. With great story, art, and gameplay, it's a critically acclaimed game that if you're into darkly exploration, you'll probably need this in your collection while you're still waiting for Hollow Knight sequel. Where is that, by the way? You can order this now in a standard edition and a collector's edition, which seems reasonably priced. Although maybe I'm just constantly appalled by the $125, the $175 collector's editions that when I see something this cheap on limited run, I think, hmm, that's a good price. But actually, it's still wildly overpriced looking at its contents. Compared to other companies, especially some companies in Europe and what they offer for the price, this is still more expensive than it should be. But, you know, when it comes to most of the games selling so bad these days, you have to earn the profit from the tat in the collector's editions. Now, Boombox, he didn't get back to me about his pick of the week, but I am 101% sure that this would be his pick of the week. I'll give you a refund if it's not. Phantom Breaker Omnia is a fast-paced 2D anime fighter from Mages being sold at Limited Run Games. This contains a few characters from Mages VNs, such as Steins Gates and Chaos Head. Visually, it looks great as you'd hope from those experience with the VNs, but uh, yeah, it is an updated version of an arcade game from 2011. Now, I do like these games, but when it comes to being shit at them, I am I am the absolute king. I mean, I wanted to review Melty Blood uh, from you know a while back, but my brain told me, Jordan, don't embarrass yourself. I'm not designed to talk about these games. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. All right, the imports. Remember, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import it for yourself, then consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you use those links, it also helps support this series ever so much, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really helps support us in more than more than you could ever know. Plus, in return, if you click our links, you can get a very nice 5% of any physical item from Play Asia if you use our coupon code GETPHYSICAL. That's all one word, GETPHYSICAL, for 5% of any physical item from Play Asia. Now, this code will, I believe, run out at the end of March, and so soon we should be getting a brand new code, so keep that in mind. Dungeon Encounters is releasing in Asian regions this week with English. This is a game from Square Enix made by an all-star team, but purposefully kept to dungeon crawling at its purest form. No fluff, no over-the-top visuals, just distilled dungeon crawling. The older I get, the more simple I get in terms of what I like. It may be a little bit hardcore for some, but I genuinely like to play this. I keep putting it on the poll for the It's A Bit Late But reviews, uh, but I seem to be in the minority there. Never mind though, I get it, but I really think this is going to be a fantastic import this year. And our executive producers Isa and Brent McLean have chosen this as their pick of the week. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax is releasing physically in Japan and Asia this week. And, as I said last week, it does not have English on either of them. This for me is possibly the biggest disappointment of the year in terms of, you know, imports and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, the game's already translated. The Steam release has all the languages, no matter where you buy it. So why not the Switch release, you bastards, Atlas, you absolute smegheads. Anyways, this is a fighting game, so it might be all right to import, although I did hear the, there's plenty of story as well, so it's up to you. There's still links below if you still want to import it and battle through the, the Japanese or Chinese languages. There's also Senran Nin Nin Ninja Tyson Neptune, uh, which is actually coming to the West in a few months' time. This Japanese release does not 
have English. All right, before we jump into the community spotlight, let's take a look at the Sakura code box I mentioned. Let's begin with the Sakura Dakui, Dakwa, Dak. I don't know, I should have researched this beforehand. Of course, this is Sakura flavored, and it's certainly something you wouldn't get every day unless you live in Japan, of which I've heard they literally shovel the Sakura into their mouths. That may not be true. This, in all honesty, is a lovely little cakey thing. Yeah. Sakura Manju. Now for this one, I had to call in our resident Manju expert. She's only three and a half years old, but she's, you know, she's vastly experienced in bun consumption. This is a sweet little snack with bean paste infused with that good old Sakura. It has a variety of tastes and textures, and my little girl actually really loved it. It was actually her favorite thing in the snack box. She ate all of them, so I'm just guessing that they taste pretty nice. I have no idea. Let's go full bun this episode because we're following up with the Sakura Baum Kuchen. I've never heard of this kind of thing before, but it's a fluffy Japanese cake with a hole in the middle. It wants to be a donut, bless him. Anyways, I consumed this bad boy straight away, and it was a unique little treat. I really enjoyed it. We'll get into more next week, so stay tuned. And if you want to order this from Sakura Co, then please, please use the link in the description as that helps support us very much. Plus, you can use the code SWITCH to get $5 off your first Sakura Co order. Now, before we get on to you lot, Leofull were nice enough to send me a physical copy of The Company Man. This is an Asian exclusive physical release of a game you may be quite familiar with. It's featured in many spotlight posts and I reviewed it back in January. It's a really solidly decent action platformer with very inventive level themes, all revolving around the office world. If you like platformers that keep the mechanics simple, but tight, doesn't really have a, like a massive gimmick, then you know it's definitely worth taking a look at. Plus, you drink coffee to heal yourself, which is obviously worth the purchase for spitting truths alone. Remember, this physical is only available in Asia and does play in English. There is links below in the description to pick this nice game up for yourself and you can support us at the same time. Thanks, Leofo, for sending me this to show off to you. I'm very happy to add it to my collection. All right, on to Eula. Silverite sent in this picture of a very lovely package of Danganronpa Decadence, a quad pack of games, although only the first three you really need to worry about. The fourth game is a bit of a cheap cash-in from what I heard. Executive producer Santa Tartaruga sent in this photo of the long-awaited Big Daddy edition of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. We're going to be seeing inside of this in a second. Go Hobo Go! I always love that name. Sent in this photo of some fantastic imports. Thanks ever so much for using our links to purchase them. Massively appreciated. Dimension Drive! That Chinese version is still going fairly cheap on Play Asia, so don't miss out on that one. The One! Thanks for using our links on a couple of games here. If you didn't watch my review of Dusk Diver 2 or Luminous Avenger 2, then you should! The latter one is actually rather fantastic. Mr. Grab sent in this photo of some really fine games. I spot the A-Train game up there at the top, which is nice to see. It's kind of an expensive import, but if you're into management games, city builders, then it is a fine time. Alonso Sanchez, thanks for using our links to purchase these two Play Asia exclusive. Thanks to those who watched the review of Love Esquire. I knew it wouldn't be like anywhere near as popular of like the Eastwood video I did, but I think it turned out rather nice. Kind of funny. I hope. Executive producer Vey sent in this photo of some games that he picked up in Japan. The Hack Collection, that does have English, and Chocobo, that does too. But from reviews, it seems like Square royally screwed up on this game, sadly. Samuel Robinson was nice to show off the insides of the Scott Pilgrim Big Daddy Edition. It really is huge and packed with stuff. I think fans will be really happy with how this turned out, even if it took well over a year to get into people's hands. Bear Dog and Aardvark, I hope you're enjoying your pizza. They sent in this, their collection of Atelier games, including the Switch triple pack of the Dusk Trilogy, a fantastic import that looks as though Play Asia finally sold out of them. Thanks to everyone who helped support us by purchasing it through our links. It might not be like the biggest seller that we've ever had, but due to the high price, it's probably earned us the most money out of all the imports, so thank you ever so much. Marty Mar, thanks for using our links to purchase some of these games, which includes plenty of Atelier goodness as well, including the Mysterious Trilogy, which still is in stock, if you don't want to miss that one. Theo sent in this photo of their collection. They have the one print games version of Eternal Radiance, like myself, which comes with a lovely soundtrack CD. Executive producer Issa sent in this photo. They got in Premium Edition Games' Demons Tier Plus, which is a nice retro-style title. I do know that the team are preparing their next reveals in the next few weeks. 
executive producer Cartoon Sorensen in the collector's edition of Crown Trick. As far as I know, this is only available in Europe. I think North Americans are missing out a lot. Little Ravenson in this photo of Cotton Rock and Roll, which will be known as Cotton Fantasy in the West because that's really boring. Call it Rock and Roll, you cowards! Rick Menso showed off the uh, size of the premium box edition of Italia Sophie 2. That's a huge beast. I can't remember if I ordered this or not. Uh, I definitely got Riser 2, though, the premium box of that one. Anyway, switch back, got in these games, including Red Ark Games' as Butcher. I think I'll be showing this off at some point in the spotlight since they did kindly send it to me as well. Pretty badass artwork, I think you'll agree. Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna sent in this photo some fantastic games, although I can't quite get over the fact that the North American cover, uh, the version of Neo Geo Pocket Collection, is slightly censored compared to other regions. I mean, God forbid we see a tiny little bit of cleavage. Can't have them kids seeing promise of some boobies. I mean, what if they accidentally get an erection while browsing GameStop? Unforgivable! Socia sent in this photo of some fine games, Metallic Child, I'll keep saying it. Get on that game, it's a real gem on the system. Radio Tarantz is sent in this photo a triple helping of super rare stuff, alongside some really nice looking Shin Megami Tensei stuff. Game Kage sent in this photo of Love Esquire, not sure why the soundtrack artwork omitted the half-naked ladies, it's a bit disappointing, but hey, the music's pretty good by the way. Executive producer Elisa sent in this photo showing off the storybook games or whatever the series is called, uh, including the brand new Cruel King, which I think is going to sell out very quickly indeed. It's, it's a bit of a beast. Executive producer Parsnip Coffee got in these games, including the lovely adventure game Alba, where you just walk around an island, take photos of wildlife and also help people out, and imports that not many people talk about. Alright, let's have a roundup. Kin Kin. No Face, Hudo, Needless Dragon, Draco Bud Smith, Etienne, My Pal Dragon, Steven665, Chew It. Dark King Koopa Pabs Bryson Caldwell Robin Hatherall Ying Ashura G McLaren Easy Wisey Craid Seamus Destiny's Hero Invasorzim Inv Inv Invasorzim Alright, please send me pictures on Twitter. So what about game? You can DM me or you can tag me in a post. Use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. You can email it into us switch watch spotlight at gmail.com plus we have a discord you know where we can chat with you and you can submit your pictures there in the submission section once i open up the thread please just send me one picture per week all right guys i hope you enjoyed this new physicals episode special thanks to our executive producers dane wilkinson god of resin boombox brent mclean jonathan rumor santa tartaruga alexander kato j crowd 7776 elisa punky deuce michael del polito cartoon soren robotech z Raven Knight, Fawn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Government Fat Cat, Issa, Vey, Mental Traveler, and Grantzer. Thank you ever so much for your support. Plus you, yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, give me uh, Disco Elysium. What we can do? Is there a Disco Ball emoji? I don't know. Something to do with Disco or dancing. Okay, leave me one of those emoji. Then I know who you are. Please check out some of our other stuff. Uh, we have the Love Esquire review from last week and uh, some other stuff as well I don't really remember. I'll see you guys over there. Have a good one. <laughs>